So here in Final Cut Pro 10, we're going to have a look at the basics of keyframing in Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing we're going to do is just drop some footage down to our timeline here, which we're going to use to, to do some basic keyframing. So once we've got uh, this clip down, we need to make sure for what we're going to look at now, which is the scale, rotation and cropping, uh, we need to make sure we have the inspector up here on the right hand side. So if you go to Window, show in workspace and then make sure you've got inspector showing um, or you can go to workspaces and set the default layout which is what we're we're looking at here in Final Cut Pro so once we've got the inspector up you can see over on the the right hand side that with this clip selected um, on the timeline um, we have options to change the scale so we can increase the scale of our clip okay and we can reset that using the hook arrow here um, and then also we've got options to change the rotation so we can hover over the number and just drag along it and that will allow us to rotate our clip. Again, the hook arrow to the right here allows us to reset that. And then above that, um, we have the position which allows us to change the X position. So to slide things right or left or to slide things up and down um, using the Y position here. And again, we can reset that. So in order to keyframe our footage to animate it, we need to set two keyframes. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on my timeline here. So we've got around 10 seconds of footage here. And basically we're gonna look at how we, we animate this. So if we look at the position, first of all, um, we're gonna to come to the beginning of our clip, okay? And we're gonna add a keyframe. And then we're gonna to come to around a second or two seconds in, and we're gonna change the position here and that changing of the position um, at a different point in time here will allow us now to basically make an animation so I'm sliding here until that clip disappears off the canvas and you can see now when I move between those two points it's animating it's animating at a reasonable speed um, between those two points so that's the basics of adding a keyframe. Now, if we want to see our keyframes on the timeline, we can do that. If we right click or control and click on our clip on the timeline, we can go and show the video animation, which is going to show the keyframes. That's really useful if we want to speed up or slow down our animation. So we've got two keyframes here for the transform options. And if I pull those apart, you can see that basically it's going to slow down the animation. So that clip is going to move to the right a lot more slowly and if I pull them close together so they're a second apart then the animation of the clip is going to move much more quickly um, across to the right there. If we go to our position now and hit the reset button it's going to put everything back to the default so we're going to reset things back to the default. So the same options count for the scale and rotation so if I position my playhead here and add a keyframe for my rotation and a keyframe for my scale then come ahead in time you can see I've got two keyframes here on the timeline and now I can rotate my clip and I've dragged it beyond 360 degrees so it's going to go around a couple of times now and I'm going to come to my second keyframe here now there's a couple of different ways we can navigate between keyframes one is to have the video animation showing and we can clearly see the keyframes there. The other is to use these buttons um, up here in the inspector to move between keyframes. So these little arrows allow us to click between keyframes. So if I come to the second keyframe for the rotation, um, I can now come to my scale and I can scale it down. And you can see we end up rotating that clip into the middle okay and scaling it down as well so let's reset those so i can reset all the transform properties here so basically by clicking this topmost hooked arrow i can reset everything so we bring the clip back to its original format and you can see here we've got transform we've got trim we've got distort we've got compositing and opacity um, and all of these elements we can keyframe. So basically wherever, when we're hovering over an element, we see this little diamond in our inspector, we can keyframe those aspects. So for instance, if I come to the, the crop here, I can have 
an animation happen. So if I keyframe the, the left crop and then come back in time and crop that right down, I can go beyond the slider distance there by dragging on the numbers there. And now my keyframe is going to reveal that clip. Okay, so this is nice if you want to layer up different clips uh, one on top of another. So if I layer up this clip on top of another clip, then you can see basically we're doing a, a reveal or even like a customized transition between those two clips. So you can use obviously the, the transitions to move between two clips, but you can also use animation and layers to move between two clips. Now I want to keep this nice and short and sweet, so we're going to do one more thing and then uh, we'll leave this there. So we're going to come to around about here in our clip and we're going to do a fade out. So we've slid our clip in, we're going to come to the opacity at the top where you can see we have the keyframing option. 100% I've added a keyframe and then if I drop down the opacity there you can see it fades out. So we can get a fade out between those two clips by animating the opacity. So when we're adding keyframes, we add the first keyframe where we turn it on, but then when we make changes at different points in time, we don't need to keep turning on the keyframes. Keyframes will start to appear themselves. And that makes it really important to use the navigation tools between the keyframes. So for instance, if I come close to one of these keyframes, and want to make an animation, then what I could be doing is actually making a, a kind of nasty jump between the, the frames. So for instance, if I push my opacity right up here, then it's going to hold there and then it's just going to jump. So basically I've made a keyframe too close um, to my other keyframe. So navigating between the keyframes and making sure you're on the keyframes is really important. We can remove keyframes by navigating to them and then clicking the little diamond and you can see on the timeline here that's removed that keyframe um, or by resetting things. We can also right click or control and click on a keyframe in the video animation to remove a keyframe as well. So I can delete those keyframes for all these different aspects. So that's a quick introduction to keyframing in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10, then please don't hesitate to leave a message below or send me a tweet at Ben Halsell. And thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.